I'm Mark Dawson from The Self-Publishing Show, and this is Self-Publishing Spotlight, where we shine a light on the indie authors who are changing the world of publishing one book at a time. Hello, and welcome to The Self-Publishing Spotlight. We meet indie authors at all stages of their careers and ask them a series of five questions. Five questions about their process, their mistakes, and their successes. Five answers that will help you level up your own author career. My name's Tom Ashford, and I'm part of The Self-Publishing Formula. Don't forget that you can get your self-publishing resource kit at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash starter kit. This week's guest is Sandy Lowe. She's written 12 books in the romance genre and she lives in New York. Welcome, Sandy. Thank you. Welcome. Uh, sorry, I messed up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for having me, Tom. No worries. Um, so would you like to start by uh, talking about the, the books that you've got so far? Sure. Uh, so one my f- most popular series is uh, the Dreamcatcher series. And um, I also have written uh, The Watchdog and Indigo Waters and Lost in You, which was my first book. And it was a boy band romance. <laughs> okay. And you've, uh, you've you spoke a little bit before about um, uh, a bit of the paranormal coming into some of your more recent novels. Yes. Uh, the Watchdog is about a ghost dog that kind of um, helps the main character seek redemption. Uh, and then I have Decaf for the Dead, which is my most recent novella that came out uh, this October. And that is um, about a haunted coffee shop. Very cool. Okay, well, the first question is, why do you write? So was there a particular reason that you started writing in the first place? I always had a really big imagination as a kid. And I used to love to play Barbie dolls and act out these elaborate stories um, and then when I was too old to play it, or at least what society deemed as me too old to play with Barbie dolls, I had all these stories within me. And so I started to write them down and uh, I would involve my friends in these stories and it would be fun for all of us. And I'd read them over the phone to them. And uh, it just became kind of something that was inside me that I had to get out. And if I'm not writing, I get like pretty depressed, honestly. Yeah, fair. Uh, and so are you, um, are you indie published or traditional? indie published all the way nice and how did the um how did you come about uh in, well publishing indie i guess what what uh, brought your attention to it you know i i started an online magazine when i was uh just 18 and uh i kind of fell into that i didn't i just wanted to get experience in journalism and through that experience with that actually becoming successful i realized that you know i i like doing things my way and um releasing things on my timeline. So I just decided that the indie route was for me. I also spoke to some uh, traditionally published authors who had kind of nightmare stories about it. So I decided that uh, indie was the way for me. Fair enough. And uh, speaking of journalism, now I always do a little bit of of stalking of the readers, readers, (laughs) of the writers before I uh, interview them. But did I see that you interviewed Taylor Swift? I did. I was the first person to interview Taylor Swift. That is amazing. (laughs) <laughs> that is a podcast episode in its own right it, it definitely is i have some stories from a lot of the the backstage experiences i've had so that's cool <laughs> okay well question number two is how do you write so uh do you tend to plot your stories out before uh well, beforehand or do you just see where the story takes you i'm definitely what what uh the writing community would call a pantser where you, know, you write by this by the seat of your pants kind of thing you yeah. don't really know the plot beforehand but I always start with like a small idea and as I write the story grows and I try to do, you know, some plot things here and there, but I find if I plan too much, I lose interest. I like to be surprised as if I'm the reader too. So, um, so yeah, I'm, I'm basically a, a very much a fly by the seat of my pants kind of writer. <laughs> yeah, fair. And uh, what sort of software do you use? I, you know, I've been wanting to try Scrivener. I hear really good things about it, but uh, as this far, I've only used Word. I use that to format things and um, I design my own book covers, but um, I think I'm gonna try try Scrivener out. I just have kind of been an old fashioned person with my software pretty yeah. much. And uh, are your books, um, are they wide or, or uh, Amazon exclusive? They are Amazon exclusive. I started out where they were wide. um, And then at the time, Barnes and Noble was doing this thing where they were 
trying to get indie authors out of their bookstores and off their website. There was like this big, I don't know if you remember it, but there was a controversial thing going on. And so I kind of was like, well, screw them and Amazon will get all my books then. <laughs> and then they changed their mind. But uh, most of my sales are on Amazon anyway. So I kind of just liked the fact that it was in the Kindle library and things like that. Yeah. And is there a particular time and place that you prefer writing? I It's weird. I either write really early in the morning or late at night. It depends on what my schedule is that day and so or when inspiration strikes. But I tend to want to write early in the morning. Yeah. Uh, well, question number three, that kind of leads into this. Uh, are you a full-time author? If you are, how did you get there? And if you aren't, what steps are you taking to make it happen? I am not a full-time author. I would say I'm a full-time author. Uh, artist in a way I That's cool. I do you know I still have my magazine that I'm running Starshine magazine uh, I still I do marketing um, for a cyber security company and then I also have my own entertainment marketing business where I do graphic design and public relations and things like that um, and so I don't know if I I would love to be a full-time author obviously but I can see me either giving up you know the other two items that are, are part of my career as a whole either uh but i definitely want to focus more on my writing 2020 is is that's one of my biggest goals is to write more in 2020 and i have the next book in the dream catcher series that has been pretty much ready to be released but i've just been sitting on it for whatever reason so i'm going to get that out this year and then i'm working on uh the second book the sequel to Decap for the Dead, which is the Haunted Cafe series. So it's going to be the second book in that trilogy. Very cool. Is that the same publication that you started in the first place or has that evolved as a career as time's gone on? Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, you no, know, that's the same publication. Actually, I took a break from Starshine Magazine about to start writing books, actually. Okay. But uh, I took a break in about 2012 to like 2017. I kind of focused more on my writing and then kind of just lost the love for journalism for a while, but I uh, refound, rediscovered it and have really been focusing on that a lot the past year and getting the magazine back up to its former glory. <laughs> awesome. Okay, well, question number four is uh, what mistakes do you think you've made and what have you got right? Oh, uh, mistakes. I would say that I... I feel like I went into things with no plan whatsoever, right. uh, which is very much my personality. I kind of just get excited about something and then run with it. Um, but I, I do think I should have planned a little bit, planning my budget for marketing and um, just spend more time marketing. That was a big mistake. I feel like in the beginning I did that and then I kind of released the book and no one heard about it because I just didn't put it out there enough. Uh, so I'm trying to change those mistakes for sure. Uh, the things that I did right when I do market my book, I actually am very good at it since I am a marketing person. <laughs> so uh, I, I'm, I'm definitely good at creating uh, environments where fans feel welcome in talking with me and interacting with me. Uh, years ago on Twitter, I created Twitter accounts for different characters in the Dreamcatcher series, and I'd have like little conversations between them and then fans would you know ask them you know questions and things like that so it was really fun that's cool okay well fifth and final question is what's your final piece of advice for authors starting out in indie publishing okay well definitely do a lot of research on how you want to release your book where you want to release your book uh, everyone has different goals and um, you know some people their goal is to see their book in a physical bookstore and so you need to find the right way to do it in the, an affordable way because there are a lot of scams out there don't fall for the you know the vanity presses that charge you thousands of dollars to print your book when you know there's so many other publishing tools out there like you know that you don't have to spend any money for really um so i would say just do a lot of research keep writing don't get discouraged um, because you will get better and, you know, you need to do it for yourself more than anything else, whether you sell one book or you know, a million books, uh, it has to come from your heart yeah. over everything else. That's good advice. And I've got a little extra question, which is, um, 
given that you're in uh well, like you're amazon exclusive do you find <laughs> that most of your uh income comes from sales or uh page reads uh you know it varies uh, i would definitely say throughout my career it's become from it's come from sales but there are certain months for some you know reason what or whatever my page reads will be way higher than my sales so i think it just it just depends on on you know the, what what's happening out there in the market or you know who happens to stumble across your book that month fair enough awesome well those are your five questions and uh you're off the hook <laughs> thank you it was fun so thank you for coming on <laughs> that's it for this week's self-publishing spotlight don't forget that you can get your free self-publishing resource kit at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash starter kit. And if you want to appear as a guest on this show, send us brief details about yourself and your writing at selfpublishingformula.com forward slash spotlight dash guest. I'm Tom Ashford and I'll see you again next week. Music